G'day everyone, Brian here and today I'm going to chat about our two-day birding tour in Langkawi Island of Malaysia. So now let's put those down there. And this was an organised tour. I did do a, some other birding once I found out what the hotspots were around Langkawi and I might do another episode on that, my independent birding here. I'm currently down on the uh, ocean side, seaside here at uh, Kota Kinabalu in in Borneo and I've done some birding here, I'll be doing a report on that then we're going to go over and do something else on the other side of the island, I'll be doing stuff on that as well, but let's go two day birding tour and this is from the perspective of a bird photographer I call it birding, but it's very different to, well it's different to what a lot of birders do and they're going to go and just if they get a, a glimpse of something they're going to write it down and note it down as a sighting where my sightings are more along the lines of do I get a photo of the bird especially a, a good one I tend to just discard any photos that aren't decent enough to identify the bird very well and usually try to get a high quality image of the bird so <clears throat> I may have seen more species I'll probably mention that again during the trip but it's the ones I got photos of Anyway, let's go. So the tour company you, I used was called Jungle Waller, J-U-N-G-L-E-W-A-L-L-A, and they've been around uh, Langkawi and other places in uh, in Malaysia for a long time. I've had them earmarked as leading our tour for a long, long time <coughs> and finally got to Langkawi. So, as I said, lots of good reviews on TripAdvisor, that sort of thing. And our guide for the tour was Vanosha and she's been guiding for a couple of years with Jungle Walla in Langkawi and she now lives there permanently with her husband so she's a local now but she actually was raised in the foothills of Fraser's Hill which is the most birdy spot in Malaysia on Peninsula Malay and actually on eBird shows the most amount of species so she learnt her love of birds and, and birding from being around that area there. Now my main targets were the three species of hornbills in Langkawi, so you've got the Oriental Pied Hornbill, Wreathed Hornbill and Great Hornbill. I'm fascinated by hornbills, can't get enough of them and I can see why people get addicted to seeing them and photographing them, they're quite an impressive bird that is no doubt. Also the Mountain Hawk Eagle, Chestnut Headed Bee Eater, Black Cap Kingfisher and the endemic brown wing kingfisher. So we were picked up at uh, 7.30 a.m. for our first morning. And Langkawi doesn't get light till around 8 a.m. I call it proper light for photography. Again, different for birders, but proper light for photography, for me, it's really about 8 o'clock, but then sunsets later as well. I'll probably mention that again. We're headed up to Gunung Raya, Gunung or Gunung, G-U-N-U-N-G is really mountain in Malay. Or as I said, Mount Raya, the place most likely to see the three species of hornbills. Now they do flit around the island, but there's a good chance that all three will be on this mountain. And the first birds we spotted at the bottom of the mountain were a couple of white-throated kingfishers kind of hanging out on the telegraph wires and I'll give you an indicative picture of the white-throated kingfishers. Then we slowly made our way up the mountain. So we were in a van, we were able to have the door of the van open so we could kind of spot outside as well, not just through the windows. We slowly made our way up and we'd stop, walk for a little, have an inspection and we had glimpses of the hornbills but they were either too far away, the light was too poor for decent photography or there was too much foliage for a decent shot. They were feeding in fig trees about four to five hundred meters away. I'll, get, I'll circle back to this fig tree during this uh, review of day one. Also saw greater racquetail drongo which are uh, semi-common I guess throughout Southeast Asia, subcontinent. Still a beautiful bird when you see them. Uh, Scarlet-backed flower pecker, again they're quite common. They're not, you can hear the little toot 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 as they fly. I'll often mistake that for uh, sunbirds but you kind of get to know the two. Uh, Scarlet-backed flower pickers, again quite common but not necessarily easy to get a good shot of because they, they flit in the foliage, bounce around really really quickly. Ruby cheek sunbird, which I didn't manage to get a decent shot of during the whole trip. I'm going to hopefully try for them again here in Borneo. Beautiful sunbird. 
Brown throated sunbird did end up getting uh, a decent shot of brown throated sunbird, especially the male. Dark necked tailor bird, which is the first time I've seen one of those, but mostly they were all too quick to be photographed. And we did manage to get a shot of the hard to find square tailed drongo cuckoo. So initially it looks like a small drongo, more like a, a bronze, bronzy drongo. But uh, it's a cuckoo, very good imitation of a drongo. But I did get a decent photo which I'll put up. Then we headed down and further in the morning, we headed down to the paddy fields where we saw white throated sunbird. Uh, sorry, white-throated kingfisher, my bad. Dollarbird, blue-tailed bee-eater, lesser whistling ducks, Chinese pond heron, purple heron, little cattle, intermediate and great egrets, also Pacific barn and rufous-bellied swallows. Plenty of swallows around the island. They're probably one of the most prolific in all of Malaysia, are the different swallows. Some more than others, especially like the Pacific swallow. And that pretty much ended the morning session and we'd shared our morning session with a couple of guys from the UK but none of our other three sessions had anyone else on them so we kind of had them to ourselves and we could go at our leisure. So as such I requested the afternoon session of day one we head back to Gunung Raya, Mount Raya because the way the sun rises in the morning, the, the, the mountain where you kind of wind your way up is in shadow because the sun rises on the opposite side. And I knew for a fact that in the afternoon it was just going to light up the mountain. So even, even if we weren't going to get the birds, it was going to be, you know, the light was going to be better than to be quite magical up there. So I mentioned that about the sun, so there's a tip. So we picked up at 3.30 in the afternoon, headed over to the... We started, because of the way the sun sets, late. We started at a place near the Dream Forest Lang Cowie. And there's next to that, there's a little Dream Forest you have to pay to go into. There's a little recreational park next to it where a lot of people went to. Unfortunately, there were too many people there, which kind of puts the birds off to some extent. So the first thing we saw was a white rumped munia, which, according to Vinosha, was quite rare and just to fly over great hornbill not much else was doing down in that area i did head back there myself at another on another day independently yeah but just to fly over the great hornbill and anyway decided we kind of use up a bit of time we we're looking for asian blue fly catchers and we, we could hear but not see so we went back up mount raya and we stopped where we'd originally see them across this valley so I'm also in the flight path. Every now and again there's going to be one flying in here, so just bear with me. So we're not there and we can see them feeding in the fig, fig trees and, and from four to five hundred metres it's just way too hard to get a photograph a decent one in the light. What I didn't know after about half an hour is you, you can actually drive round to the fig tree. I'm not sure why we didn't. Well, I kind of did, was that there was actually a construction area, like roadworks or something like that, and it was right under the fig tree, and but they were all packing up. So we went around there, drove around there, and we got out, and the guys didn't mind that I was kind of walking in and out of their little area where they'd had barring up, and they were right above us. So we ended up getting oh, probably 40 to 50 minutes, something like that. Time kind of flew as the three different hornbills just flying, <coughs> excuse me, above us and eating in this giant fruiting tree. And that's what you're looking for, these giant fruiting trees. They will just come there habitually. We also saw, uh, and yes, obviously the light was way, way better than the morning. We also saw flyers of Eurasian sparrowhawk and juvenile white-bellied sea eagles. But again, I've got to describe the sound of these hornbills. Not so much the pie, but the bigger ones, the wreathed and the giant. Now think of watching one of those movies where they do the slow-mo slow -mo chopper rotors. They are that loud. You, you'll hear them before you even see them. It's the, the most incredible sound. Of course, when they call, is also an incredible sound when you hear these big hornbills calling. So we've got our, some good photos. 
and I'd actually gotten a decent, a really good shot of a flying wreathed hornbill where we had started at before we went around. So I got a really good shot of a wreathed hornbill there. And then we knew we went down the hill back to the other side and at night they flew out from where they were feeding all the great hornbills and headed towards their roosting area at night, which is really magic as they headed towards the sunset. So ended up being a great afternoon, good day overall, learnt a lot about where to kind of travel around to and see birds, and it was magical in the end. So I'm going to throw up a few in images now of our first day of birding in Langkawi with uh, Jungle Walla and Vanosha. So thanks for watching, check out these, uh, some of these images, and I'll see you soon for day two of our burning tour or burning photographic tour on Lane Cowie. Bye for now.